building the annual Christmas train display on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. In this episode, my sons and I will build a simple but fun Christmas train display in an afternoon. Since we did this construction as a family project, most of this episode will be in slideshow format in order to avoid YouTube's restrictions on minors and videos and to avoid any copyright complications with the music that we had playing in the background while we worked. Our train village usually circles our Christmas tree, but the addition of a puppy to the family makes that a very unwise choice for this holiday season. So instead we looked to a foosball table in the rec room to elevate the layout up and out of harm's way. For a base, I picked up two packs of 14 and a half inch by 48 inch white styrofoam sheets at Home Depot. Uh, these handy packs are not only easier to transport in the car, but they're also easy to reconfigure into various shapes for the final layout. The first step was to trim two of the sheets to fit inside the foosball play area. These sheets lay across the control rods for the foosball players, providing some basic support for the middle of the layout. Next, I laid out four sheets of foam in a 48 inch by 58 inch pattern and taped the edges together, just enough to keep them from separating. You don't have to use too much. I then flipped this panel over so that the tape was on the bottom and out of sight and roughly centered it over the foosball table. This white styrofoam will provide a snowy looking structural base for the display and is modular and can be reused next year. Next, I laid out an oval of standard 031 tubular track, making sure that the track remained as much as possible over the wood structure of the foosball table. The outside edges of the foam have no underlaying support and are only strong enough to support some light scenery, not trains. Next, I added two Lionel power lock-ons, one at the front of the layout and one at the back for even power distribution, and I poked some small holes in the foam to accommodate the wires. Next, we unpacked our ceramic Christmas village and laid out the buildings across the table. We tried several different village configurations before settling on this particular plan. Then we ran the wires for the building lights. One advantage of the 031 track is that the ties are tall enough to allow for the light cords to pass underneath the track. We decided that we needed a tunnel to add some visual interest to the layout and to hide much of the oval. We wired the rear track lock on at this point as it was going to be located inside the tunnel. To make the mountain, we cut one of the styrofoam sheets into two seven and a quarter by 48 inch sections and measured the locations for tunnel portals on each side. To support the walls, but to keep the construction modular to reuse next year, we inserted wood toothpicks into the wall edge and just pushed the wall neatly into the foam underlayment, overlapping the panels to match the table width. We repeated this process without tunnel portals for the back wall and then laid one complete panel and a portion of another across the top, securing these in the same manner with toothpicks. It doesn't take much to hold these things together. Next, some commercial snow blanket material recycled from last year's project provided texture for the mountain and concealed the light cords for the village structures. Then I completed the wiring and we added some additional scenic features, people, trees, and my son insisted on adding additional lighting for the display, including inside the tunnel. To add just a little bit of interaction on the layout, I took this Marks 404 block signal uh, that was featured in one of my very earliest videos and added that to the layout. I replaced the original Marks bulbs with uh, some LEDs. These are E10 screw mount LEDs. These are the same ones that I use for my Marks replacement headlights and the replacement bulbs of my Marks turnouts. They fit the signal wonderfully. They were white, and we just added some of these uh, Apple Barrel Craft paints to make our red, yellow, and green indications. And as you move it to green, the power is restored and the train moves. Uh, if you wanna see how I wired this up, uh, here is the link up here to the video 
uh, from about two years ago now where I should have to do this. Once everything is in place, we've got it all lighted up and it's just a matter of adding the decorations, the people, the buildings, uh, the little scenery items. A lot of this stuff came from dollar stores. Our brick road came from Dollar Tree this year. Uh, some of our figures as well, some of the trees that we're using. Uh, the Santa and reindeer is actually a cake topper and there is a link in the description to where you can acquire that. Uh, for power, right now I'm using a uh, Christmas beep from ready-made trains based on old Kusan tooling. We swap out, we use some steam locomotives as well. And for the, our passenger cars, we have a couple of the uh, Southern Crescent cars that I rewired uh, for new LED lighting as well. Buildings themselves came from a collection, I believe this was from Kmart, from, oh, 30 years ago now. Uh, that uh, my wife purchased at an after Christmas sale. She bought the whole village at once. They're pretty well sized for O scale. Again, some of the people came from Dollar Tree this year. Some are old bottle power figures and some were originally designed to be Christmas ornaments for small Christmas trees, but you cut the uh, strings off and then we have a group of carolers here by our train station. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you did, please like it, subscribe, share it, and leave a comment about your favorite holiday train traditions. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and keep the trains running. And we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.